Good morning, dear friend. I want to welcome you to the Sunday morning broadcast from the Mountain View Independent Baptist Church. This is Preacher Bobby. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And when this airs, it will be December the 25th, which is Christmas morning. And uh, we, unless the weather, of course, this is a Thursday recording this, but if the weather permits, we are having a.m. services only at 11 a.m. be a church worship service only no Sunday school no evening service but we will be having service Sunday morning or Christmas uh, preaching so if your church is not you don't have a church we want to invite you to come out be a part of our Sunday morning service I know it is going to be so very cold but the good thing of it is none of us have to ride a mule in a wagon to church. We all got vehicles with heaters, so uh, just fire that thing up, warm the car up, come on down and uh, be in service with us. You certainly are invited. Uh, just to give you a quick tip where we are, uh, on Myers Lane, just go to the Food Line store, turn down the road that runs between Food Line and Dollar General, and uh, you can see the church right in front of you. Like I say, Christmas morning on the 25th. The only service we'll be having is the 11 a.m. service only for that day, but you are invited. Uh, I want to thank all of our listeners for uh, tuning in every week. We appreciate your kind of attention and appreciate WLAF radio station for making it possible to uh, come into your homes with the message. And want to encourage each and every one as we wake up on Sunday on Sunday morning that the reason that we enjoy Christmas and celebrate Christmas is the birth of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I know there's a lot of other things, the Santa Claus and the presents and the traveling, all that goes with it, and that's a part of it. But let's not forget that God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son, born in a manger, come through the womb of a virgin, grew up, began his earthly ministry, went to the cross, shed his blood, gave his life. On that third day, though, he picked it back up and walked out of that grave. And now he sits on the right hand of the Father, but the Christmas is about the birth of our Savior. I'm going to be in the book of Luke, chapter number 2, but we're going to move ahead from verse 6 and 7 today. It's going to begin in verse number 25. So if you do have Bibles and you, and you like to uh, read along, Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 25, and we'll go to verse 35. And I'm going to preach a little bit about the first Christmas. So in Luke 2, verse 35, and the Bibles, verse 25, I mean, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout. He waiting on the consolation of Israel, and that consolation means comfort, but he was waiting on the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Fathers, we bow before you, thanking you so much for the reading of your word for the gift of this day, for the opportunity to stand and proclaim your precious word. Lord, as we pray upon this Christmas day, so much of the world has moved on and forgotten and turned their head away from the birth of your son Jesus. God, may we always remember and recognize the great gift that you gave to humanity. 
And Father, we pray for all those that listen, all those that will wake up this morning, some, Lord, they'll be excited about presents, about family. They'll be excited about their many blessings. Others will be going through a time of bereavement, a time of sickness, a time of sorrow. But God, may we never forget this is about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ on that, on that blessed day. We pray for all of our first responders. We pray, God, for our police, our firefighters, rescue squads, the EMTs, doctors, the nurses. We pray for our military. God, we pray that you would bless them and their family wherever they are for our leaders of this nation. Lord, we pray for every preacher, teacher, pastor that stands to open up today to break open the bread of life. God, you would anoint each and every one upon high. Lord, we pray for our WLF radio station that you would ever bless them in what they do. And Father, we pray for every church this morning as they meet in your name that you would bless each and every one. We pray for our nation and the world. We love you. We thank you, giving you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all. In Christ Jesus' name we do pray, and amen. The first Christmas. Have you ever put any thought into that, dear friend? We all grew up as babies, and our, as babies it would be our first Christmas. But the world had been celebrating Christmas for thousands of years. They've been celebrating, and they've been some had been celebrating the birth of our Christ. But think about the world had never had a Christmas until Jesus was born in Bethlehem. They had nothing that they could call Christmas. There was no gift that was given. <clears throat> there was no gift that would take away the sins of the world, a, a way for salvation to be offered to whosoever will gospel. For everyone, no matter whether you're Jew or Gentile, what nationality, what nation you live in, it doesn't matter. The gospel is for every for the every person, regardless of who you are and where you are. It's a free gift that God paid the price on Calvary. But it had to begin with God's plan as a little baby born in Bethlehem. A miraculous birth. She was a virgin, never known a man. But through the power of the Holy Ghost, she became pregnant with a child, God's son. And God sent his son so that he could die for the sins of the world. That's how much he loved us. And the first Christmas is when we Christmas comes around and we remember the gift that God gave us. And that was the gift of his son. Without Jesus being born, he couldn't grow up. Without him being born, he couldn't have went to the cross. Without him being born, he could not have shed his blood, died for our sins, defeated death, hell, and the grave. It all began with his birth. Now, we all know that Jesus has always been. This was not the beginning of Jesus whatsoever. This was the birth, as him birthed through a virgin in a body of flesh and blood that he could die one day and shed his blood. But the world had never experienced a Christmas. We just repeat what has been going on for thousands of years. Every baby born, they'll have their first Christmas. But the world, first Christmas came on that day in Bethlehem, and December the 25th is the day that is set aside to remember and to rejoice and to celebrate what, how Jesus came into this world in Bethlehem. And we have a man here named Simeon. Bible don't say a whole lot about him, about who he was, but God had chosen him and gave him the promise that he should not see death until he had blessed and seen the baby Jesus. And so you have one person in the world outside of Mary and Joseph that knew that a Christ child would be born. He didn't know the day. He didn't know until Mary and Joseph brought him into the temple to be blessed as their custom was. He just knew he had the promise of God the Holy Ghost that said, you will not taste death. You will not die until you actually see this consolation of Israel. You get to hold him in your arms, and you get to pray a blessing over him. I don't know what that would do for you and me, but Simeon was the one person in the entire world that God gave that particular promise to. 
is that you are going to get to see him. I couldn't tell you how old he was, how young he was. I've heard anywhere from he's 200 years old till he was just a young man. The Bible doesn't say. But the Bible does say that God gave that man a promise that he was going to live until he could see the little baby Jesus. And so every day of his life, and he didn't know when it would be. He didn't know what that was until Mary and Joseph came carrying that little baby in. So every day he would get up. Every day he would look forward. Maybe this is the day. Maybe this is the day that God's promise to come true in my life, that I'll get to see the consolation of Israel. I don't know if it meant anything to anybody else, but it meant everything to him is that one day he could hold that baby and look into his eyes and pray a blessing over the Son of Almighty God. So he was the one that the first Christmas to this world actually came, dear friend, on the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. The world never even knew what it it was. But the Bible tells us something about Simeon. He was a righteous man. He was righteous before God. And God, just as God chose Mary and God chose Joseph, God chose Simeon. And just as God chose John the Baptist and God did what he did, he would choose people for his purpose and Simeon was the one that God chose to uh, to to recognize who this baby was I mean he was uh, we've got believers that knew because of the Old Testament prophets that one day he would Micah said he'd be born in Bethlehem and other prophets and I especially Isaiah said oh he's gonna be a great it's gonna be great and he prophesied a long time before the, this day had came and he said in Isaiah 9 and 6 for us unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called wonderful and counselor the mighty god the everlasting father and the prince of peace and they prophesied but they didn't get to see him they didn't get to hold him they didn't get to make the announcement and they didn't get the promise of God, the Holy Ghost, by saying this. They, just, they had a prophecy that was written down, recorded in the Word of God that said, one day this day is going to be here. One day this is going to happen. And right here and the day and the scripture that I read to you this morning is the day that it came true for Simeon. And I can imagine what it's like. To me, it would be like I know that God has promised a rapture. I've met the Savior. He lives inside of me. I have been born again. I have been, I've experienced salvation. And I know that the God that cannot lie promised me in his word, there's a day he is going to rapture this church out of this world and take us to heaven. And when he does, we get a new glorified resurrected body. Perfect, just perfect. And a home in heaven with him. It hasn't taken place yet. But a God that cannot lie said, one day it's going to happen. And Simeon was living with a like promise. You will get to see the Son of God as a baby introduced into this world. And he had a prophecy that he would prophesy to Mary and Joseph. But he would let them know, this is the consolation of Israel. I got to see it. I got to tell you about it. One day, everything God told him that would happen one day, that was the day that it happened. I don't know when the rapture is going to take place, but I know one day it is going to happen. Whether I'm on this side of the grave or the other side of the grave, it's still going to happen. And if you look at Isaiah, not only chapter 9, verse 6, but also verse 7, and he he begins to give give them something about uh, what God didn't tell them. He just told them... uh, you know, it, it's okay, you have been chosen, you're a chosen vessel, you're blessed among women, that you would carry the Son of God, give birth, and raise him as your own. Told Joseph, don't put her away, she's still a godly woman. But now he's given a different message to Simeon. But the one I'm talking about now is in Isaiah. In Isaiah 9 and 7, he said, Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. 
the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And so he, and Simeon begins to give them a, a prophecy that goes along with the message God hadn't given them yet. And if you look back at verse number 34, and Simeon blessed them as well, and he says this unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child, her child, is set for the fall and the rising of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. But then he begins to take, to the, begins to take her on, the, on what it is that she had to carry. It was an enormous burden that she had to carry. This was no ordinary baby. What he's trying to say to her is, being God's son, dying for the good of the people and paying the salvation debt, he's going to have enemies. And if he has enemies as his mother, it's going to hurt you as well. Because in verse 35, he says, Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. She doesn't know it yet because none of us know the future. And as far as every day goes, we don't know what we'll face tomorrow if it even comes for us. But what he was talking about, dear friend, as the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ, she would watch him be arrested. She would watch him carry his own cross. She would watch him be beaten. She would watch him being nailed from the cross. She would hear him say these words to her. And, and John, he said, his beloved disciple, mother, here's your son, John, here is your mother. And she knew that he would be dying not only for the sins of the world, but for her sins as well. And so Simeon gives her a warning. This is no ordinary baby. God has entrusted you to raise his son, but here's some things that you need to ponder in your heart. But they was waiting daily for the Messiah. He knew one day, but he didn't know when it was going to come. But he knew that a God that cannot lie that it was going to happen. The Holy Ghost revealed to him. I mean, this was way before that the Holy Ghost was given to the church on the day of Pentecost. This was God revealed to him, you're going to get to see him. You see, it, he would get to hold God's anointed. Jesus was a baby, but he was still God's anointed. And, and Simeon had been anointed by God through the Holy Ghost that one day that he would know this because it was him that of all the babies he blessed. Of all the parents that ever came through the temple, of all those that came according to their custom, the Holy Ghost revealed to Simeon, this is the one you've been waiting for. This is the one who is God's son. Here is the consolation of Israel. Just as John the Baptist introduced him when he came out from the Judean wilderness and said, here is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, Simeon is introducing this little baby and to all those that were there, but to also again to Mary and Joseph and said, There's the, here's the comfort of Israel. He's the one that had been promised by the prophets of thousands of years ago, and today <coughs> is his day. And he's saying that Jesus is a whole lot more than just, a, than just the, the promise that would came. His, this Jesus would take on the debt that he didn't know. He would take on our sins that he didn't commit. He came to save a lost and a dying world. But this day right here, this day is a whole lot different. I don't know if he recognized that when he got up. I don't know if he got it when he was set down the table. I don't know at what point it may have been when they came, Mary and Joseph came walking in carrying that little baby that he realized this day's different than any other day. I can see him. And it could have been that the Holy Ghost just kind of whispered in his ear and pointed and said, there he is. That's the one that's been promised. That's the baby you've been waiting on. And the Holy Ghost revealed to Simeon, this is it. And we, we live in a time where uh, much of Christmas is based on the perfect present, the present we've been waiting for, the one we just couldn't live without, the one that we left hints about, the one that we saw on TV. For a child, it's that favorite toy they see on the, on the TV commercials. For the adult, it's something much bigger that they've put a lot of thought, and they really want this for Christmas. And, and the, the husband or the wife, they try to get it, and the parents try to get a perfect present 
present for their kids, but the only perfect present this world has ever known or been introduced or been given was the present of the Lord Jesus Christ. I can imagine the joy in Simeon's heart when he when he saw them coming in and the Holy Ghost said, there he is this day is the one that you've been promised. I believe as he took that baby in his arms, just think about this for a minute. If you've ever held a little baby for the first time, if you've ever held your own child for the first time, for a grandchild for the first time, imagine what it was like to be this man of God who was living on a promise from God the Holy Ghost that one day this day would come. But it's more than just seeing. It's more than just recognizing him. It's more than the Holy Spirit saying, there he is. But to hold the baby Jesus in your arms and know who it is that you're holding and know what the promise is and know why he came into this world, I could not imagine the joy that was in this godly man's heart when he took it, when Mary handed that little baby from her and handed it to him and he sat down and he held and looked into the face of Jesus for the first time. I could just imagine that, buddy, he was doing somersaults on the inside to know that he got to do something that very few people ever got to do. Outside of Mary, outside of Joseph, and maybe close friends, I don't know who got to hold the baby Jesus. I'm pretty sure Mary was protective over him, as mothers are. But could you imagine what it would have been like to be that man of God? He was holding a promise that was given to him years ago. He was holding the prophecy that the Old Testament prophets gave. But he was holding the Son of God in his, in his arms. And he, was going, and he got to do something that very few people ever got to do. He held God's anointed. His arms beheld him. Now, that's not the only baby he, did, he ever held in his arms because you understand he was, his job was to bless the babies as their custom was. But this wasn't an ordinary baby, and he knew it. And so the, out of the thousands of babies that man held, this one right here was different than any other. I'm telling you what, in all the sacrifices that were given in the temple, he was holding the last sacrifice that the world would ever need. Nobody, nobody would ever need a sacrifice after Jesus went to the cross. You see, he tells them to go ahead and depart in peace. He tells them the prophecy's been fulfilled. There's nothing that could happen in his life any greater before God called him home than to know he held that baby in his arms. And you see, God sometimes will choose someone and he'll give us the most extraordinary blessing. I've never held him as a baby. I've held my own. I've held all my grandkids. But one day I'll get to look at, that, at my Savior that went to the cross and that died for me. I'm telling you, he saw everything ahead of that. He warned Mary to beware and to be strong. But he got to hold the consolation of Israel. You see, Jesus was much more than a baby. He was a promise that was sent. He was the promise that he himself made in the Garden of Eden when he told the devil, I'm coming back for them. They belong to me. I created them. I breathed life into Adam and Eve, and life it began because of my word and my will and my authority and my eternal life source. And so when that baby came, the devil couldn't stop him. The wicked didn't want him, but he came anyway, went to the cross, went to the grave. Now he sits on the right hand of the Father. I know it's a little early, but I want to thank you so much for listening. I want to thank you for being a part of this. And what I would like you to say is just thank God for the best Christmas present that's ever given. Because without Jesus, we got no hope. Without Jesus, we got no future. Without Jesus, there's no heaven, there's no new body. Without Jesus, there's no reason for this Christmas season. And let's not, get, let's not forget about the Lord and his gift. Let's not forget about the birth of the baby Jesus. Let's not get so caught up in the running around and doing all the things that, that 
Christmas uh, season requires. But let's take some time and tell our kids and our grandkids Christmas is about the birth of Jesus Christ and the gift that God gave to us. I want to thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being a part of this. God bless you and Merry Christmas.